love and guide you faithfully, to care for you, and to live with you in holiness according to the Holy Gospel. I also promise never to forsake you, but to be true to you always, and good days and bad, in riches and poverty, in health and sickness, for as long as we both shall live. I, Joanna Mary, that here before the Lord in his innocence, and I take you, Rice Laser, as my lawful husband, and promise the Lord of you to assist you and to live with you in holiness according to the Holy Gospel. I also promise never to forsake you, but to be true to you always, and good days and bad, in riches and poverty, in health and sickness, for as long as we both shall live. for 
learned from above. In your marriage, turn constantly to the Word of God and the God of the Word. And then this love is a gift to be received from God. It's a gift given by God in Christ, by the Spirit, to sinners, to us. God in Christ saves sinners from the darkness of sin. In His love for us, He makes us loved children of God, who also now know to love again, and are more and more inclined to love. That belongs to the gift of salvation, which is God's gift to you. Because we have been loved by God in Christ, we too will love again as we ought. So a gift received is love. Revealed love, received love is also, thirdly, commanded love. Jesus says, this is my commandment that you love one another. And some people might balk at that. Some may ask, well, true love doesn't need a commandment, does it? should be spontaneous, shouldn't it? It shouldn't have to be commanded. The Lord knows better, and He knows us better. And in fact, this is the evidence that love has really taken hold. When you love Jesus, the Son of God, your Savior, keeping His commandment, in that way, you will love one another. So love is not simply horizontal. There is a vertical imperative, a commandment from Jesus your Lord. So when you make your vows, you will come into the married state where your married love from now on is an imperative, a commandment from your Lord. And you are here to take that imperative, the command to love, upon yourself. The covenant of marriage, making vows before the Lord, binds you to a love for each other that has to be there from now on. It is an imperative. And that's not at all contrary to true love, as Jesus tells us. Loving the Lord Jesus, keeping His commandment, you will love one another truly. And then finally, the example of love. Love one another in this way, says Jesus, as I have loved you. Which the Lord then expands. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. The Lord Jesus teaches the quality of divine love, which works its way through him to his own disciples, and to you too. Jesus' own death on the cross will make this love possible in you, his disciples. And Jesus' own death on the cross will also be the example of love, an example given to you, love to show to one another as Jesus' love. And this love is seeking the good of the other even at the cost of good for oneself. Jesus says to his disciples, since you are mine, he calls them his friends. Since you are mine, this is what I am for you. I am the one who lays down my life for those who are mine, my friends. So this is the gift of the Lord Jesus. He says, this is my responsibility to those who are mine. And this is unrestrained love in the covenant bond. Love holding nothing back for those who belong to Jesus. And this is the model, this is the example of what it means to belong to one another. To love those who are dear to you. Now this is true first of all in the body of Christ as his disciples together. But then also in marriage. This is love, not minimalist, not holding back. When you belong to one another, this is what it means. 
Greater love has no one than this. Jesus is the example. And this kind of love, love to this extent as Jesus has shown by his death, this kind of love is the greatest safety, the greatest security, the greatest joy and freedom within the bonds of those who belong together. Whether it's Jesus and his friends, or disciples with one another, or husband and wife in marriage. When you have this holding nothing back love, that will be bliss. Bryce and Johanna, learn this love from the Lord, your Savior. Learn it, keep exercising it continually, and be joyful in your marriage. Reveal love, receive love, commanded love, and modeled love will ensure your joy in love until you meet your Lord. Let us now stand and we will sing together over... Never was an early riser Used to be an up all night Never saw the morning light Quite like I do now Never said no to a party Never started saving money But everything is different Since you've been around it's the way you're smiling at me It's in the way you hold my hand It's the way I've watched you change me From a boy into a man It's a million things about you And I don't know what she it is She has so many good friends throughout school Yes, she's easy to get along with But I'd say she also has good taste And if you look around the room tonight Many of you can attest to that Never used to get excited To sit here in the silence Holding on to something The way I'm holding you Didn't used to know how fast time Walks and runs and flies by I never thought I'd feel so deeply But damn I do It's the way you're smiling at me in the way you hold my hand It's the way I've watched you change me From a boy into a man It's a million things about you And I don't know what it is But I have never known a love like this It's funny how everything I dreamed about Starts to seem so empty without you. It is our prayer that you will uh, beautify your wife. She will even be more beautiful than she is now. It's the way you're smiling at me. It's in the way you hold my hand. It's a way I've watched you change me From a boy into a man It's a million things about you And I don't know what it is But I have never known a love like this All right, so we're going to introduce our bridal party So I'll start off with my best man, Trent Blazer Trent, come on up here and stuck with me for his whole life. Uh, he is my brother. He is best man. He is looking up to me, but I also look up to him on how to be a great husband. Next is Catherine Behrman, my maid of honor. Catherine is one of my older sisters and my maid of honor. Our relationship was tumultuous at times growing up. But thankfully with some time and maturity and maybe a little bit of geographical distance, we get along much better now. I love her dearly and I'm glad 
much to be standing beside me today. All right, next up is Nate Church. So Nate and I became friends in college our freshman year when he tried to sell me insurance. I still don't know what he was trying to sell me exactly, but I said no. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we also lived together for several years in undergrad and then throughout PT school. Next is Abby Behrman. <laughs> Abby is my baby sister. I filled the role of the youngest girl in the family for 10 short years before Abby came around. I was so thrilled to have a little sister after years of only younger brothers, and it's been very fun watching her grow up. She's currently a senior in high school, and her passions are swimming and dairy cows. She owns six cows with two on the way. <laughs> All right, next up is Andy Martinez. Andy is one of my childhood best friends. We grew up in the same church and also went to the same college. Andy, Jake, and I were the three amigos in school and were always pushing our luck with our youth pastor. He hated pranks, but we loved him. Uh, next up is Maria Vanderhaag. <laughs> Maria is my cousin, and despite growing up across the continent in Ontario, Canada, we have always been very close. Maria used to come spend the summers here, where there was no shortage of quality time to hang out, play Yahtzee, and take naps. <laughs> Maria has been married for several years now, is rocking motherhood with two littles and one on the way. Alright, we have Ben Clifford next. Alright, Ben and I met when I first moved to Washington. We lived together for most of my time here, and we also went to the same church. Ben has been that friend that I can always count on and also make terrible decisions to go eat sketchy all-you-can-eat buffet and get very sick afterwards. Jessica Brookelman is my next bridesmaid. <laughs> Jess is a very close friend of mine, but we both really don't remember how we met, but I think it was here at the fairgrounds. Jake has had every hairstyle known to man, although you can, you can never guess by looking at him now. <laughs> Jake is one of those friends that you can convince him to do anything. Standing up to peer pressure is not a strong suit of it. <laughs> Next is Sarah Bynema. Sarah is my high school bestie, and let's just say she has matured since high school. She never was exactly wild, but she used to live off of flavor blasted goldfish and pretend to smoke cigarettes so that her parents could incentivize her quitting. <laughs> now she's kind of crunchy, and she reads every ingredient on the list to make sure there's no seed oils in her family's food. <laughs> All right, next we got John DeClean. John and I met in PT school and lived together throughout that time. We bonded over our popcorn nights and rapping to Drop the World by Little Wayne. He also helped me keep on track in life, and I helped him by testing him, I mean, growing his patience. I don't know how he didn't kill me in PT school. John, you're welcome. I'm sure you use this skill a lot now with your three kids. Next is Marina from Denial. <laughs> Marina married my cousin, and we've been close friends since we met while they were on their first date. And yes, it's as weird as it sounds. <laughs> Marina is one of my most intentional friends, and her home is like my second home. He once put worms in my toilet and convinced me that there was something wrong with our piping. He took that joke way farther than it needed to go, and even got our landlord in on the joke. He had me calling plumbers to fix our problem. He is one of my most thoughtful friends I have to this day. And last, I have Christy Roller. Christy has been a good friend of mine for a long time, but especially over the last few years. Christy is kind, capable, determined, and a great cook. I value her advice and conversation over the last years especially. 
Christy got married three months ago, and I did check in with her to make sure it's worth it, and she definitely recommends it. So. <laughs> So I have the privilege of being Johanna's maid of honor and older sister. I've known her her whole entire life. Uh, I've been in the same classroom with her for about half of our life, shared a bed with her for close to 10 years, and a bathroom with her for almost 20. So I would think that I might have the most advice to give Bryce. Now that being said, I'm going to hold off on most of it, uh, because I don't want the favor returned later at any point. For the handful of you here who don't know our family dynamic, there are seven kids in the family. Joe was born third of the first set of three girls, followed by three brothers, and finally our baby sister. I think because she was the third in the first set of three girls, she was destined to be the peacemaker, whether she wanted to be or not. Mostly she didn't want to be, but she had to be. That's probably the tumultuous that she talked about earlier. I have so many happy memories of our early childhood, playing with all of our friends on Thalen Drive, practicing our plays, dressing ourselves or our Barbies up, riding bikes, visiting the horses, and despite the fact that Johanna was 18 months younger than me, she ended up in the grade below me in school because she skipped second grade, which I was always very jealous of. She made so many good friends throughout school. Yes, she's easy to get along with, but I'd say she also has good taste. And if you look around the room tonight, many of you can attest to that. I think our adult friendship really began to develop more after I moved away eight years ago. We spent, we've spent hours and hours on the phone talking about our jobs, family, friends, some of you, ourselves, dating lives, Bryce even, and so much more. In some ways, I found that for our family, it can be a lot easier to be open when you're not face to face. That maybe is my first piece of advice to Bryce. Maybe call Johanna <laughs> from a few states away. <laughs> Joe's also visited me while I lived in Nashville and a couple different times in New York. And I had the particular honor of being the first family member to meet Bryce as he came along with Joe to pick me up from the airport a couple years ago before I even knew he existed. And Bryce, I will take the credit for Johanna actually deciding to introduce you to our parents that visit, because we did spend some time discussing if she should, and then once we decided that she should, how she should. Our phone calls over the next year after that trip began to have a different subject. Yes, Bryce, but also, uh, how the right side of Johanna's face was, was sort of not responding as she expected. And then shortly after her most recent trip to New York, she had a diagnosis of a tumor. And I'll say that, while well, it was difficult for everybody, I'm sure, it's really hard being the sister who lives so far away from someone who's going through a health crisis. I, it was good to be there for each other over the phone, and I think the years and years that we've practiced that made it a lot easier for us to do that. I will say over the last year or so, I, there, has been a di there has been a different amount of like first, where I'm the first responder to Johanna's feelings over the, the phone because she has Bryce as more of that role in her life. And so it's very, uh, you know, good change, but also good that we know that Bryce is such a great guy. A lot of those same qualities that we love about Johanna I see are very evident in his life, such as his wonderful friends, and also like, his intelligence and ability to emotionally react well with our family. It's really awesome to have that. Anyways, without further ado to the bride, cheers. This is the moment that all younger brothers have been waiting for their entire lives. An open mic, a captive audience and the right platform to air out all my grievances over the past 28 years. So, buckle up. No. Uh, at first, Bryce and I, we were uh, mortal enemies growing up. Just to
typical younger and older brother. I was always the cool younger brother, and to him, I was always the annoying younger brother. Which one of us was right, we will never know, but I think I was in the right, because, you know, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> it wasn't until he went off to college, moved away, and then our relationship started to change. He actually wanted to hang out, and every time we'd visit, it was always a great time. And then when he graduated from his doctorate program, he invited me to hang out with all of his graduates. And I was like, no, I'm old, I'm mature, I know, I'm the annoying younger brother. So Bryce, you go, have a great time. I'm not dragging along, I'm no longer the annoying younger brother. But that was the moment where I was like, you know, we went from mortal enemies to really good friends. So um, it was just awesome to see how uh, our relationship evolved from there. So Bryce, as you move on to this next stage of your relationship and in your life, just want to point out, you are a natural leader, and I don't expect anything to change as you move into your marriage. Um, just growing up, you are always the first one to push me to go beyond where I was willing to go. Naturally, I think of cliff jumping. Up in the Boundary Waters, we are backpacking, there's this cliff that people say, yeah, you can jump off it into the waters. We've never been there, but people said we could do it, so why not? I was smart and said, no way, I'm not doing that. That sounds dangerous. It wasn't until Bryce jumped up, jumped off the cliff, went in the water, and I saw him come up alive. And I was like, okay, I think we can do that now. And so you're always the first one to push us to do something that I wouldn't have done. And also skiing in uh, Colorado. It's one of my favorite memories of uh, we were racing our dad down the hill, and those two lonely cabins, Bryce and I were like, hey, there's these several black diamond hills. We can do that. We're great skiers. Little did we know we were like rag dolls flying down those uh, moguls on the double black diamonds. And as we searched for a way to get off those, we're going through the woods. Bryce was leading us, and his trail ended. And I'm kind of slowing down because I didn't see where he'd go, and I just hear, Trent, stop! About a 15 foot drop, Bryce is laying at the bottom of this little drop off, flat on his face. And it was just one of those moments where if he wasn't leading, that would have been me. And he was kind enough to warn me of that drop off. And as you guys uh, continue growing your relationship, I just encourage you to enjoy the little moments. For me, it was when I was in eighth grade, Bryce here in high school, we'd drive to indoor soccer together. It wasn't much, but it was still a solid 20 minutes that we had together listening to music on your stupid juke phone <laughs> that could break with one simple snap of the wrist, the most flimsy phone I've ever seen. And while it may not have been a big moment to you, it was big for me, because there's this one instant you actually gave me a compliment, which was <laughs> super rare. We were playing with his buddy on a high school team. I was only in eighth grade, and he said I was the third best player on that team. <laughs> As an eighth grader, that was huge. Always remember that. He gave me a compliment, and you can't take that back. <laughs> However, even though you are a natural leader, there is something else you need to work on as you go into marriage. When there is a noise in the middle of the night, you no longer have a younger brother to sacrifice. <laughs> You are now the sacrifice when there is a noise. I know I was collateral damage when we were younger. I can go out into the hallway and be eaten by the monster, but little 100 pound Trent wasn't stopping any monster from getting to you. So now when you hear a noise, you're the sacrificial lamb. You're the collateral damage for Johanna. So Johanna, don't you ever go out and investigate a noise. That's a crisis, all right? And just some marriage advice. Marriage isn't some sort of cruise ship where one person gets to sit back and enjoy all the comedies that come with it and the other person serves. It is more like a pirate ship where it's all hands on deck. And like any good pirate, if you do it right, you'll get some booty with it. <laughs>
favorite aunt. <laughs> Johanna, we are so delighted that you have been married today to this fine young man, an American from Illinois. <laughs>
Her independent visits started when she completed eighth grade. And since she came often, since then she's come often to our neck of the woods. She usually came to our province in order to spend time with Maria, but she faithfully spent time at our place as well. She has the ability to jump right in and be part of our life. It doesn't matter if it's baking cookies or helping my kids with their homework. She even enthusiastically became part of a shoveling crew in one of our epic snowstorms. We have definitely reaped the benefits of Johanna's nursing expertise as well. She has removed stitches for us, which certainly saved us an expensive hospital bill that comes when you visit this country. Johanna has had, has a very plucky, fun nature and has a delightful impact on everyone around her. We do have a memory that involves a little person in our house spilling juice all over the counter and chair and floor. And this could have been a disaster, but with the uh, that affected with tears, but thankfully Johanna was over. So it just became part of the fun. And I am Janice. I am Johanna's other aunt. I'm not going to say favorite because I am also her most humble aunt. <laughs> but if you know, you know. We love Johanna so much, we named our daughter after her. The original Johanna, my mom, is the beautiful reason the name Johanna is in our town at all. When we were figuring out the name for our youngest, we knew we wanted to name her after my wonderful mom, but we also thought it special that she could be named after Johanna, tonight's beautiful girl. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to get to know Johanna from when she was a wee girl who called her vehicle a bourbon cop to when she was older and our family moved in and we would live with them when Steph and Jim were away. After one such living visit, my husband was struck by just how helpful Jo was. She'd take care of her chores and even a few of her younger siblings with little fanfare. Our girls thought her pretty great too, so in the months after that visit, our own three daughters, if they were having some difficulties chipping in, John would put his this great example to good use and say things, well, what do you think Joe would do? <laughs> I had the privilege of coaching Johanna for many years in high school on the basketball team. And Johanna is a treat to coach, willing to do most anything that was demanded of her. Sometimes in athletics, helping your team means sacrificing personal goals. So in her senior year, it was pretty great to see this quietly determined athlete with lots of grit, who was consistently strong defensively and willing to do the small things, that she could also be the top scorer of the league. It was also a fun full circle moment when Johanna came to live with our girls while John and I went to Edmonton. I ended up leaving when one of our girls had a fever and was sick, which was sort of a big deal for me. But it was so reassuring to know that they were in the capable hands of Nurse Johanna. Johanna and Bryce, congratulations. We are very grateful to God for this day, Johanna. Johanna, we've seen, and Bryce, Johanna, we've seen you to be a blessing to our families for a very long time, and have known that you would be a blessing for your own family if the Lord would provide one for you. We are thankful that God provided Bryce. We knew that it was important for you to meet a man who loved the Lord first, who could be a leader to you, and we knew that you would keep waiting until you met him. We are thankful that you had these values and that God sent you someone who met those values and then some. Bryce, welcome to the family. We pray that God will continue to bless you both. We also appreciate that Bryce is giving you a blazer, Joe. You've been a bear man for far too long. <laughs> Hospital and help me after work. I made 
see a man in the store, and then she'd say, Daddy? And then she'd answer herself with, Daddy's at work. <laughs> you. One winter day, just coming out of the grocery store, I was stopped by a reporter from the Wealth Tribune. He asked if he could take pictures of our girls and put them in the paper in their fresh faces feature. Surprisingly, he didn't want a picture of my fresh face. <laughs> when Johanna was just over one year old, we moved to Linda. We packed up our belongings and we had the trust with our girl. Stephanie drove our family car with my mom and my mom came along with the company and all the support. Catherine became my little sidekick, riding with me in the back in the truck. <laughs> Catherine became my little sidekick, riding with me in the truck. And Johanna, Laurel, and Laurel rode in the car with Stephanie and Mom. As I think back, I believe that my mom didn't go a little crazy. Their time was filled with endless children's song tapes. And in that quiet moments, when the tape player was off, Johanna filled their ears with tuneless harmonica playing. <laughs> Nothing made her quite so happy as blowing in and out from that little instrument. And for Stephanie's reason, a happy father was worth the noise. My mom? I'm not sure she was as serious. We settled into life in India, and we were blessed that for the first time, our children had cousins close by. Johanna was especially close to her cousin Kelsey. The two of them were like two peas in a pod, and there was no end to the fun these two had together. Before too long, Seth joined the family, and two years later, Caleb arrived, and our boy-girl count began to be a little more balanced. We began to wonder if it was something in the water. <laughs> Every night before going to bed, I had the practice of checking in on all the children. After a busy day, running after five children, there's nothing quite like seeing their angelic faces relax in peaceful sleep. On one particular night, the first room I checked was Laurel and Catherine's. At the time, they shared a queen-size bed. You can imagine my shock to find that Catherine's side was empty. About ten minutes before heading upstairs, I had heard someone in go to the bathroom and concluded from her absence that Catherine must have been the one who had used the bathroom. The question was, where was she now? I hadn't seen her in our bed as I passed through our room. I checked the spare room. No Catherine. Then I heard a cough coming from the room that six-year-old Johanna shared with her four-year-old brother, Seth. Catherine had a cough, and it didn't sound like Catherine's cough. We went to their room, and at first glance, all seemed to be normal. Seth was in his bed, slightly askew and uncovered, but a little push on Seth, and I pulled up the blankets, and I soon had him settled in straight. The lump in Johanna's bed presumably was Johanna, but just to be sure, I went around the back of her bed to the far side, and there, fast asleep, lay Johanna and Catherine. I watched them for a few moments when Johanna, sensing my presence, literally opened her eyes, looked at me, and complained, Catherine keeps coughing on me. <laughs> As if it was the most natural thing in the world to have Catherine sharing her talk about. Ah, I responded. But what is Catherine doing in your bed? Johanna considered this for a moment, looked over at Catherine, and then at the back of voice announced, I don't know. <laughs> at this point, Catherine woke up. I asked her the same question, but she was just as bewildered as Johanna. You just went to the bathroom, I told her. Then I must have sleepwalked here, she concluded. At this point, Seth interjected a little snore. Referencing Seth's snoring, Catherine announced that there was a cow in the room. <laughs> and I told you that there was one too many little cows in Johanna's bed. Amidst giggles, Catherine climbed down and went back into her 
domande. Not yet in school, Johanna would spend a fair amount of time in the car as we drove her and her sisters, as we drove her sisters to and from the border to catch the school bus taking them to John Calvin's school in Yarrow, British Columbia. Often, Stephanie would listen to Dr. Laura giving sensible advice to her listeners. <laughs> of course, all kinds of people called Dr. Laura, and sometimes when she felt that the topic under discussion wasn't appropriate for the years, she would turn off. Sometimes when uh, she felt the topic under discussion wasn't appropriate for little ears, she would turn her off. One time after Stephanie had turned Dr. Laura off for that very reason, Johanna in the back seat piped up, what, mom? You don't like that problem? <laughs> Eventually, it was time for Johanna to head off to school. She entered first grade at John Calvin School. And then, next year, she joined the rest of the American crowd for the first year of Cornerstone Christian. Our family continued to grow. Michael was born. Finally, our family was balanced with three girls and three boys. Then, when Mike was about two, we acquired a puppy. A year later, in 2005, little sister Abby was born, our tiebreaker. It was official. The girls and the family were the winners. If there was ever one word that was used to describe Johanna, it was persistent. She knew what she wanted to do, and if we told her we couldn't do it now, but would do it later, she would be content to wait. But at the same time, she would be sure to remind us when it was later, and that we still hadn't done that particular thing. This persistence paid off in many aspects of her life. She was athletic, and as a young girl, she played living youth sports, soccer, volleyball, and basketball. She joined her sisters in clumping dancing and enjoyed participating in the local events that featured this amazing art form. <laughs> she played basketball for Cornerstone and even received a special award as the league's top scorer in her senior year. She excelled in her schooling as well. She graduated from Cornerstone in 2012 with excellent grades, and she's still working on getting over her principal's surprised reaction to her final GPA. Like, why was he so shocked? <laughs> She began with a summer job in a dairy, in a dairy processing plant as soon as she was old enough. Then she held a part-time job at the Green Barn, and eventually she became a certified nursing assistant, first at the Christian Healthcare Center, and then in St. Joseph's Hospital. She worked diligently in her nursing prerequisite courses at Wacom Union College. We remember her amassing hundreds of note cards with medical terms on one side and the definitions on the other. And then she spent hours memorizing all that information for the courses. We were thankful when she was accepted into the Skadden Valley College nursing program. At this point, she was hired full-time as a registered nurse at St. Joe's. And in the meantime, she took on the coursework at Western Washington in order to translate her nursing degree into a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Johanna is also a good friend, as evidenced by the many times she served as bridesmaid at a friend's wedding. Her debut as maid of honor was for Sarah Hicks, one of her classmates at Cornerstone, with whom she'd grown close through the years. 
Then she reprised the role with her cousin Maria. There are many miles between these two, but through the years they have remained very close friends. We have so many pictures of Maria and Johanna, I don't know why I picked this one. <laughs> chicken wings late at night. She also served as bridesmaid for her friends, Kelsey Faber, Julia Hammond, and Nicole Romley, a neighborhood friend. And finally, this past spring for Christy Faber, all those bridesmaid dresses may give cause for fear that when Bryce moves into the house on Daisy Lane, he might just have to put his clothes into the closet in the guest room. <laughs> Love's provision for Johanna was in London. She had a fulfilling job, saved her money, and eventually bought a new car and then in a house. She loved her family, loved being, in, being an aunt to Mackenzie and Kaya, and then eventually to Nola and Jordan. She had the opportunity to travel, going to far flung places like Australia, Switzerland, Hawaii, California, New York, Arizona, and Mexico. Indeed, there was much to be thankful for. At the same time, there was a void. So when we heard that Johanna had met a young man, we were very happy for her. We did have our questions, of course. Does he love the Lord? Rank first. And we were very happy and thankful to hear that he did. Eventually, Johanna felt secure enough in her relationship that she dared to introduce him to the family. We're not quite sure how we should feel about that. <laughs> Did she worry that all of us might scare him off? In any event, the first, the first introduction went well, and Bryce was a welcome addition to our family's activities. Over time, we got to know Bryce and could appreciate his talents and abilities. It was really nice to have a doctor of physical therapy to consult with when a wrist is sore. He knows his way around the kitchen, and he even could operate a sewing machine. By all accounts, we were pretty sure he was a keeper. And in March, while on vacation with the family, celebrating Jim's 60th birthday, Johanna discovered that she did not blow up a balloon. It was very strange. It's not something one does on a regular basis, but when you go to blow up a balloon, you just expect to be able to do it. But somehow, Johanna could not purse her lips in such a way that need is needed to do this. Upon returning home, Johanna made an appointment to get this checked out, and the results indicated that she had a benign tumor on her facial nerve close to her ear by the surface of her brain. This proved to be a very stressful time for Johanna. Yet she knew that this too was from God's hand, and that he would work also this for her good. Yet the prospect of facing neurosurgery and not knowing what else it would entail, in addition to still having things to sort out with Bryce, I think that Johanna was overwhelmed. And on July 2nd, I received a text from her. And I quote, just FYI, me and Bryce broke up. <laughs> we were heart sick. We really liked this guy, and we were going to miss him. Johanna was sad, too. A couple of weeks later, I got a phone call from her. I, I think I might have made a mistake, she said. I urged her to reach out and ask Bryce if he would be willing to talk. Thankfully, he was. And by mid-August, when Johanna was scheduled for her surgery, we were instructed to keep Bryce in the loop as to what we were hearing from the surgical staff. In God's providence, Johanna's surgery went well. She made a good recovery. And soon, Bryce was officially back by her side. The time since then has flown by with a number of important milestones in Johanna and Bryce's relationship. Bryce attended the American Reformed Church regularly with Johanna and 
began to pursue membership in the church. Both recognized that holding to the same faith was necessary for their relationship to thrive. In February, they became engaged, and in May, Christ was received as a member of the Lyndon ARC. Bryce, we are very thankful for you and the joy that your presence adds to our family. We, we love how you love your daughter, and we praise God that you brought you together. We are thankful to be able to officially welcome you into our family. Bryce and Johanna, we pray that God will bless you with a long and happy marriage and that it will truly reflect, as Scripture lays out, the relationship between Jesus Christ and the Church. May you never cease to be thankful for the good gift God has given you in each other. Barman, 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 Barman. Yes. 
great host and a great family, and we're so lucky to see our son marrying into such a beautiful community, both with your family and all of you. It just it makes my wife and I very uh, appreciative of him being so far away from his mom and dad, which is in Illinois, by the way. <laughs> Cowboys lost in the wilderness and they were getting, it was desperate. And one of them finally looked up and he said, Look, there's a bacon bush, we're saved. They're like, Praise Jesus, and they start running towards this bacon bush. And all of a sudden, they get mowed down in a hail of gunfire. It turns out it wasn't a bacon bush, it was a hand bush. <laughs>